This is episode 53 of the Podcraft Beer Show for Monday, July 19th, 2021. Craft Beer Superfan Josh joins us for today's show to enjoy a Belgium Sour Ale, an American Wild Ale, an American Pale Ale, and a Barrel-Aged Imperial Stout. This is the Podcraft Beer Show. I'm your host, Chris. We got your other host, Charlie. Yo, what's happening? We got tech guy, Steve. Hello, hello. We got special guest star, Josh. With us. Hey, hey, guys, how's it going? <laughs> Glad to be back. Charlie, keep your Can finger you out of my ear. It's like hey, that wrong angle. Your beard is there we go. with that. My miniature beard. <laughs> <laughs> so today, boys, we got some, uh, got some good beers. Nice and warm. We got some... Uh, I like a couple good light beers. sours for us. I like when you bring good beers. Yeah. It Got is a, getting, uh, getting to be sour season, so. It is. Ooh, Got a pale ale, sours. and then we're going to end with a little, something a little little heavier. A little more yeah, uh, stuff. waiting for the uh, winter to come back is what we're doing. On yes, sir. One. Let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. So our, our first beer is uh, it's going to be Modern Time Sun Myth. Uh, it's a wild ale. Uh, it's a blonde ale fermented with house, house cultures, aged in uh, red and white that, wine man. barrels, and then racked in a bed of fresh ripe peaches and peach puree. Steve, Love you're so helpful. Peaches. Not only text, but so we a... shall see. Ooh, smells nice yeah. and funky. Right, there's, there's probably a joke in here, but there's nothing better than some cherries or peaches in a sour. I am a fan of. Uh, Peaches would be my favorite stone fruit. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, man. I've, I've had nectarine ones that I, I really like, too, but the peaches. peach. Oh, man, that is funky. <sighs> oh, oh, oh. Ooh, I like Man, it. that's tart. The jowls. Just yeah. like, woo Just makes you salivating. salivating. <laughs> oh. That's pretty dang good stuff there, man. Mm. That's a tiny bottle. Man. That's a, that's a wake. People. That's a wake you up. Yeah, you drink that in the morning. You'll be woke up. A lot of Woker's peach on there. Chris Kalka, that's a lot of sure. peach. A lot of tart on it, which is great. <sighs> Very tarty. Oh, that's very, yeah. Kind of dry in the end. It's yeah, getting you on the end. Little, the finish is a little dry. Man, that's a... Well, and the stone fruit, the peach comes out, too, at the it end. It sure too. does. It's like, it's all of a sudden you drink it, you get a little peach, but as it... Cleans the palate. You're like, oh, I just feel like I just right into a peach a little bit. That's nice. Yeah, I that's a. Uh, ain't that a peach? I like oh, it man. a lot. That's a drinker, man. That's yeah, a- I've this is I've had a different variation of Sun Myth. This is the first of this one. You can taste um, that w- the wine barrel a little bit too. Mm-hmm. It's a it's got Quite a little a winey in there. Um, almost a, it says white wine. Do you know what I throw in here? It says white and red. White and red? Yep. Because um, I'm getting a little bit of a, a Chardonnay. I'm getting really... I drank a lot of wine on my vacation, so I'm getting a little bit of Chardonnay kind of flavor in there. Winer. Uh, you know. I, you know what would be good in here? Some vanilla. Ooh, that knocked it out of the park for me. Yeah. What do you think, Steve? It's good. It's not terrible. That's it's not a- terrible. <laughs> that is a tartar one that we've been into for a while. Yeah, I've uh, I've been hitting a few sours uh, this uh, the last. Still few a little busy. Days. Yeah, last few days. Yeah, the uh, certainly had a couple this week with the hot weather. It's been great. Yeah. You know, I've had to step away from my uh, my go to stouts and uh, start hitting some of those sours. Excellent. Sours are great on a warm afternoon. For yeah. Sure. I could drink. I could drink several of those bottles. What's, what do we got for ABV on this bugger? Didn't feel very. All right. No, it's got to be six ish. Five eight. I'm guessing. What do you think? Six eight one. Eight really? six one. No. It says eight one. You got to get your eyes. It says checked. eight one. It says six one over here. Eight one. On the bottom. One. The uh, do you have the, the? I wonder if the original Sun Myth was six one. Could be. And mm. this, this one has been knocked up a few notches. Well, it could be because the sugars from the peaches fermented a little there bit. There you go. Maybe. I don't Is know. Is this aged in Angelica barrels? Yes. yes. Oh, You're like looking you at the said. wrong one. <laughs> I'm looking at the wrong one. I stand corrected. Thank you, sir. I knew I was Gosh, right once a day. 
Well, yeah, you know, I was, gosh, that's, that might be the first time. You know, there was, there was the first one time other time. Right? That was the yeah. first time I was wrong. There was <laughs> one other time. You know, Ladies and gentlemen, time, wait. Yeah. I thought Mark I was wrong. Let's have a moment of silence. Mark it down on calendar. Chris <laughs> has finally been wrong. Does your wife know this? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to mark that one down. We'll have to mark that down. I'll text her just a second. To There's a out. holiday <laughs> going to be etched in stone. So I stand corrected. Help me out with Angelica Barrels. Is yeah. that a winery or is that a style? Because I am, you know, not that... Uh, Sour blonde ale, aged in angelica barrels with peaches added. Now that's a that's a that's a short list of uh, adjuncts. Do we got angelica barrels? I'm working on it. Reserve angelica. Mm, Some see. sort of. Isn't there a alcohol? Angelica it says angelica typically ages for at least five years in barrels. Oh, wow! Uh, it's a fortified dessert wine made yeah. from Mission Grape. Uh, okay, yeah, so uh, Mission Grape was introduced in California, 1778. Primary it. wine grape for nearly a century. Angelica was originally made by Franciscan missionaries. Uh, it was a regular beverage of gold miners during the gold rush. There it is, you know. A yeah. little bit of history. Gold bit. miners are looping up on wine. I'll tell you, it's, 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 uh, it goes well with this beer. They done good. Mm-hmm. It's a. Uh, it doesn't. You know how like sometimes a wine barrel or any barrel will kind of take over a beer. Mm-hmm. This is just like you get a little bit of like oakiness from the wine barrel. You get a little bit of the wininess from the barrel, but you're not getting. You're. It's not overpowering. It balances well with the acidity from the uh, fermentation and from the peach. That's really good. Well, we're gonna we're gonna go in a too bad I. Uh, well, well, I'm still again. savoring this moment. You better savor up, dude. We didn't come here to watch. I'm gonna uh, came here to drink. This Charlie. one's a little bit bigger uh, bottle. We're gonna get this number correct right off the bat. Six point five percent alcohol. This is the Horace Convocation 2020. Perser- Pervanch. Pervanch. Is that? I, 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 I you know what? Yep. Yeah. Per- Pervanch. I actually looked that up today. Um, what does it mean? Uh, it, it's flowers. It's a. Uh, uh, it's French for periwinkle. Oh. Um, it's pretty the, color. Uh, okay, this thing was uh, white wine barrel aged Belgian style sour ale a- aged on butterfly pea flower tea and lemons, and it's got a yellowy look to it. You're so looking at it. Yes, pronounce this word. <laughs> oh, you're going it's back to the French designates a flower. Flower. In French, for reference, it is said as pervenche. Pervenche. In English, however, it is I like the lady better than it says pervenche. 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 A little duolingo. Pervenche. pervenche. Oh, yeah. For you guys, it'll be uh, pervenche. <laughs> Me. Pervenche. <laughs> pervenche. It's, uh, it's funny. It looks. Just in the bottle. It's a clear bottle, which is kind of interesting. You don't see many beers in a clear bottle, but it, you know, I don't know if you, that's intentional or if it's a bottle shortage issue. No, so it was it was intentional. So okay. this this barrel it was a it was a four. Uh, there was two hundred and twelve sets of these of the. There was four bottles that came out in the set. All four of them made stave and nail with Horace, uh, and then they um, based on the ad, adjuncts and, and the, the color that they took on. He put them in clear barrel or clear uh, bottles, and then had his daughter choose the color of the uh, of the labels based on her her crayon set. Um, she's like, "Hey, you know, grab whatever it. whatever color matches, you know, whatever color you want to make the labels." So th- just based on the vibrance of the of the, and this one was was one of the the lighter ones. We we had one previously that was really bright red. There's another one that's green. Um, but the uh, he let his daughter. He put them in the the clear. The clear glasses to show off the color of the of the beer, and then had his daughter choose the. Uh, Doesn't uh, have a crazy the nose. I mean, it's no. not smelling. You could smell the lemon. Can, but it's not like overpowering. Like no. the peaches in the other one, not overpowering, but super present. But uh, tastes pretty good. It's a lot milder, I'll tell you that. Yeah. yeah. So this is a, a white wine Belgian style sour aged on butter, butterfly pea flower tea and lemons. So all four of them were, were adjunct with uh, like a fruit. Uh, there was a fruit and then a uh, uh, tea. They, they gave him the tea treatment. Says it was out of barrels Anthony and Frank. So does he name his barrels? Names all of his barrels. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, That's so fun. like on the side of the convocation, 
uh, all of your convocation uh, uh, bottles say like uh, like the original year he had um, that was the label for all of the club bottles. The last couple of years, I don't think we've had really. Last last year, I don't think there was very many of, of that style. The first year, there was a lot of sours. Yeah, and then they were all like, uh, mm. um, but that's what he does. Yeah, he names all the different barrels. That's fun. So this is basically it's a two barrel blend, right? Which is kind of cool. You know, you're not getting a lot of, you're not blending to hide anything. Like this is, they are what they are. Right. That's smooth. I, yeah, I can drink that. Uh, it's really good. super tasty. And I and I don't know if it's the Sun Myth over was t- more tart than we had anticipated. I think it was. Um, and so this one, I, you know, I thought with the lemons, this one was going to just be like, pucker That's, up, baby. Yeah. But it, the lemon's there, but it's not, it's more of a lemonade lemon mm. rather than a lemon. It's not punching. It's yeah. not like lemon musk or, yeah, you yeah. know, musk or yeah. whatever. Um, yeah, well, they, yeah, t- I wonder how, I wonder if he uses uh, second use or second uh, time use. Uh, Could be. Fruit. In these or something of you know where he uses it in something else and just throws it in there. I don't know, but yeah, I do. I, I do appreciate the lemon flavor without the lemon punch, though. Yeah, absolutely. I do see just a little bit of it, and then you know you get that tea on the on the back, yeah. and that's yeah, some uh, almost like earthy aromaticness to it, mm-hmm. yeah. but not overpowering. Not over again. Yeah, not. We had that again, one that was just like a couple weeks ago that was super earthy. Was that where was that from? Uh, I don't remember. The, oh, um, the the Mc uh, the, Mason Mc. Uh, the, no, was, was it the Hort or the uh, the Humble Sea one that we did? Yeah, um, that we were we were it all has like earthy on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was that uh, Belgian. I forget what it, it was. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll pull it up here in just a second. No, that's really good. I like that that the T on that back end. This to me too. This is like you know. Obviously, there's not a lot of it, but. In terms of it being produced a lot, but this could be something like I just mowed the lawn. I'm done. I want to sit in the shade and just suck down a bottle of this by myself. That that's like Daddy Lemonade stand. Josh's out in the middle of the field <laughs> sucking down lemonades that are eight percent or six point five percent. That's some hard lemonade, there, brother. Shades of Earth. Shades of Earth. Farmhouse yeah. Ale from Humble Sea. And it was like shades of it was like that was the one that was made with like hay, right? Mm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. I remember that. Yeah, no, it was uh um Speaking of hay, what'd you guys have this week? Speaking of lemons, um I've been traveling through the Midwest and uh we had uh I think you're lemon. We did a Costco stop and you know there was a uh, 24 pack of uh, Lining Kugel Summer Shandy, little Rattler action. Just jumped right on it. Speaking of adult lemonade, but you know this is far. It's a far cry from this in terms of like flavors. Like it was. Wasn't that like it was a almost, lager or pilsner? It's it, yeah. It's and they just. Put I, a bunch it, of I think it's a in. wheat ale oh, with okay. lemon. It's half lemonade, half that. It's super sweet, but you know what? It was 105 in yeah. the shade. And it was humid. This it actually was like just quench thirst quenching, you yeah. know. So, you know, so when, when in Rome, right? When you when in the Midwest. So is that all you drank? Is Lina Kugels the whole? No, time? I brought my you know my you know cases Stash. of beer with me. You know, going. What about, to, what about you, Steve? I'm going to go with the Stone Enjoy by Fourth of July seven fourteen seven four twenty one. Really? A tangerine and a pineapple double IPA at nine percent. Sounds woo. Yeah, I don't think they've. I don't think they've done a double IPA for those enjoy buys. They're usually just an IPA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From what I remember. Yeah, yeah. That pretty, was it. Pretty powerful. You drank that all week. Nope. <laughs> he drank one. <laughs> at nine percent, he slept yeah. for three days. Yeah. Chrissy, Chris. Um. Man, I'm gonna I'm gonna break the rules and go with go with two beers. Uh, Steve actually brought to my attention. Um, you know, it's been hot recently. It's been really hot, and burning burning beard just uh, put out their uh, the BBR. Um, so I, I shot out there on the Fourth of July to pick some of that up. Um, an American lager. An American lager. It was you know red, white, and blue. It was yeah. yeah. No, it was. It's, gosh, it was great. It's fantastic. It was super super good. But I'd say the um, probably the best the. Um, 
that was really good for what it was. America, you know, America. On, on the 4th of July. Yeah. Um, but, but I'd have to say, uh, that, um, I've been, you know, trying to work through some stouts at, at night, but, uh, so I had that stellar abyss from, uh, from Humble Sea the other day of pastry stout, um, macadamia nuts, vanilla and coffee, mm. like, you know, my three favorite yeah. adjuncts. Yep. Uh, it was, it was phenomenal. It was really, really good. It was, uh, it was tasty. It was a small bottle. I love, uh, um, you know, small bottles of, of stout. You know, so you twelve can, ounce is it? Yeah, this it's is a game changer. Yeah, me. this is like the the size of that. Uh, I want to say it's yeah, it's like yeah. that size. Five hundred million. Phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's great. You can, yeah, great to have. You know, with maybe one other person, maybe or not. by yourself yeah. while you're making a lasagna. That was that was my uh, my story. But it, was and it takes a long time to make lasagna, so yeah, you got yeah. you got plenty Hours. of time. Hours upon that hours. That. I did. I did I, a. Go, go ahead. ahead. You go ahead. You I was just gonna say last night I did a full twelve ounce can <sighs> of a stout just because. <laughs> when you got home. Yeah. That's a got, good start. Got home from a long day of driving and just poured it into a glass and didn't even ask. No. That's Does anybody great. want some of this? And it was just like <laughs> I'm drinking what are you, this. The kids are still drinking. No, the wife. You know, <laughs> she does like a little bit of stout every once in a while. <laughs> I, you know. There just That's there wasn't funny. an opportunity to share it. <laughs> well, I had something called Kook Cumber from Humble Sea that Chris dropped off, and man, that was ridiculously surprisingly good. It was super good. Like yeah. it was a cucumber sour, or like a um, it was oh yeah cucumber cucumber like sour? a shanty. Like a <laughs> uh, um, it was super super good. It was um, delicious. That, do the cucumbers make it super refreshing? Because yes. it goes, yeah. Yes, so absolutely. it was like, uh, I mean, it was it was light, four and a half percent. Oh yeah, um, so good. You know, it was it was phenomenal. It was, I mean, I love I love Humble Sea. Like I, and I think they make phenomenal beers. Yeah. I, I only bought um, a bottle of it, and then I uh, I got a bottle for Aaron as well. Um, it was really tough for me to give that to give that to him <laughs> <laughs> after he tasted it. Like, you know, no, after you I had the one, I was like, ah, oh, maybe, yeah, maybe not. not maybe this, I'll uh... keep that for myself. But the uh, yeah, it was it was phenomenal. Like I would have never thought like a, a cucumber like sour. It was super light. Yeah, it was phenomenal. <laughs> it was it was yeah. really really good. It was super tasty. I, I wish you would have been here to experience it, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. And if you know, maybe we can run into one up there at uh, yeah Humble Sea. Just start begging on our That'd knees. That'd be okay. Yeah, I think this was the second time that they had released it, and you know, I should have like I should have known I was on to something when like all these other guys in the there's a Facebook page for the the Kooks Club, like all the all the members, and these guys were like you know kind of going bananas that they had uh, done um, it again. that they had brought it back out. It was the first time since I think yeah. the first anniversary. Mm. Um, so you know, guys are buying three, four bottles, which usually should have been a yeah. Why didn't you, know, you do that? Chris? Right, instead of just one. You know, but I'm not. I'm, I'm partaking in no by July. Yeah, we're yeah. not. Partaking. Yeah, what is that? That's no I'm, by July. I, I'm super confused. You haven't heard about this? No. Well, we started it. We so. broke it already. It. So you start. Well, it's one thing I will not condone. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I am not going to. Uh, you know, only because you know I got you know. Well, the creek cable car is coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that's not July though. Is it? Is it? I think it's in the end of July. Is it August? I thought you said August, September. Well, as long as we don't receive it. Okay, as long as we don't pick it up. Yeah, it. we're, we're kind of, you know, we're kind of making our rules to, to fit. <laughs> you know? well, it, we're going to bend a few. You know, there's, uh, yeah, yeah that was that was the one that was like, I, I'm not passing that up, you know. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, Modern Times just uh, canned a Nectar Nomicon, which yeah. has always been a great get. Mm-hmm. They've always done like the crawlers of it. That's about all you could get, and they finally canned it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they sent out a uh, email yesterday of like, just so you know, keep it refrigerated because it will oh, ferment, right. ferment in the oh, can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had so, that happen with a mm. crawler right over there at Kaboom. that sink. Lifted it out of the sink, boom! There's a fruit bomb. It was everywhere, man. I had to hose down the whole patio. Spe- mm. So you got that being in the mountains. Uh, throwing your beers into an ice chest. Yeah. Don't throw them. Just yeah. experience. They're under enough pressure. They are. <laughs> All it takes is one shard of ice. Just a short yeah. shard. You lose a few beers. Yeah, I shotgunned it. Yeah. As it was. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. <laughs> oh, I guess I'll drink this now. <laughs> it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. 
Hammering it down. All yeah. right. Isn't it always five o'clock on vacation? It, it is. Spencer pulled out a stone, thinking it was a, a Coke Zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, now I got to drink this at yeah. noon. He didn't look at it. Huh? <laughs> That's not a bad deal. Lady in Shreds. Uh, this is a West Coast IPA from Humble Sea. Oh, I'm sorry. West Coast Pale Ale. Uh, West Coast. When you start off with that, you know what yeah, else is I know. there? That's. I mean, I love the graphics on this thing. It's, they've always got the best names. Still, my favorite is Kook, I Am Your Father. I mean, that is absolutely the best. They do a lot of Star Wars, a lot of Harry Potter. Yeah. Maybe they have another Harry Potter beer this weekend. Yeah, they the do. Kermit the Fog. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My, yeah daughter, my daughter made me peel off the sticker and turn it into a bookmark. Yeah. <laughs> That's how much she loved that one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so this is a West Coast Pale Ale with uh, Citra and then uh, Vic Secret Hops. You can smell the Citra right off mm-hmm. the nose. For sure. Ah, yeah, yeah, there's there's all over in it. Sorry, I over poured over here. Sorry. Yeah. My apologies to the uh, Charlie with the guy heavy the hand. hand. He forgot it was a 16-ounce pour. Yeah, just <laughs> dug on it. I saw that big bottle, and I was like, oops, that's not a bottle. That's a can. Oh, man, so, that smells so good. That's my favorite style of beer that Humble Sea mm. makes. I mean, they make phenomenal foggy IPAs. Their stouts are great, um, but they knock these West Coast pale ales out of the park. Yeah, like a hoppy pale ale. Um, yeah. I just I, it I love it. Smells so good. I like it. Yeah, the um, they actually had two. I think uh, two pale ales this week or this last week when they they released it. They had not this, your father's pale. Ale. They had yep. yep. Um, it's it's literally your father's good. pale. Oh, it ale. is your father. Yeah. I thought it was not your father. No, it is um, your father's. I. I still remember my first interaction with Humble Sea. It was at Festival of Dankness. And they had, they didn't have a keg. So they just brought cans mm-hmm. to share. And they were cracking cans. And they had a um, chronic Oles of Narnia. Mm-hmm. Spelled with a K. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, it was, you know, like you go to, you go to Dankness. And, and there's all these breweries there. You're just going around drinking all kinds of beers. And it's, it's always nice to like run into something. You're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know this, and this is great. And that's how it was with Humble Sea when I had their beers for the first time, and haven't really looked back since. Anytime I'm in Northern California, it's gotta hit them. It's a stop. It's you just gotta you gotta swing by and see what they got. And um, it's you know, last time I was in there, I brought them some San Diego beers. You know, just like, and they were. Totally cool because it's during COVID. Yeah. And they, I didn't order ahead of time. I just walked in and because I didn't know if I could stop or not. It was kind of one of those, like, I'm just swinging through. And uh, the guys are like, oh, yeah, we'll get these out for you in like 10, 15 minutes. So I had to go back to the car and just like grab a couple of four packs and walk in there and just give them to them. And they were totally cool guys. They're like, uh, they're one of the nicest breweries and customer friendly breweries I've been to. And not being a regular, just, like, taking care of you. Like, yeah. they didn't have to be. They could have been like, oh, come back in a half an hour. Because that was the lead time on all their stuff. And yeah. he's like, oh, no, we'll get these for you in about 10 minutes. So, it was, awesome. they were totally cool. I'm excited. We're actually, uh, they, they have a, um, a a little party going on tomorrow, a member's party. Uh, we're going to we're gonna shoot up there and uh, and we'll uh, we'll check it out for ourselves. A little cannonball run. That's right. Yeah, Northern See California. What, we're driving in the Sprinter, right? No, not yet. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, that's a that's a work in progress. The uh, making offers all over the country on Sprinter vans. Really? Trying to trying to get one of those? Trying to work out a deal. Yeah, we're. Uh, you want a camper one, or you want a? Uh, yeah, it's a certain one. But the uh, these guys, they are uh, they're they're a little too. Uh, I I just like. Yeah, no, the price of these things is ridiculous. Oh, it's crazy it's right now because that's what everybody's getting. Right. Everybody's going road tripping because... Right. Well, so, the uh, yeah, no, it's difficult. These, and, and er, I'll, on you know, on my RV podcast, I'll talk about how I <laughs> RV salesmen are the lowest yeah. life form. Oh, but, uh, they're the um, lowest. We'll, uh, yeah. they're, no, they're that's the, funny. <laughs> we'll, we'll touch on that on a different show. Yeah. <laughs> the like, coffee and RV podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that's so the um, yeah, no, that's phenomenal. My yeah, favorite style beer. Good, I'm excited wow, to. So uh, no, I like that. That's, it, that's, that's, that's even I would drink that. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm a pale ale fan. Yeah, Charlie, you drink everything. Yeah, that's true. 
Now, I'm not. I, I I don't avoid anything, but I mean, uh, you know, like I said, I started with so much uh, West Coast IPA. Now, pale ales are a little different because they're a little less alcohol, a little less, you know, bitterness, a little less everything basically, and I kind of like that dubbed down a little bit. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a uh, it's good. Like it's you know, it's not. I wouldn't. I mean, it, it's got a little haziness to it, but I wouldn't call it a hazy. No, it no it's not even have, close to hazy. Um, and, I mean, their hazies look like orange juice. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it and it does have a little bit of a, a fluffy pillow to it, but not like over fluffy pillowed. I would. Um, I'm I'm still in search of the hazy 5.0. That's what I. I, I mean, if somebody can figure out how to make that and make it balanced. This is a good. This is a good compromise. It's not a hazy, but it's not. I wouldn't call it a um, a high filtered West Coast well, if IPA. They hike yeah. this up to a hazy, dude. That's super drinkable. Right. That would so knock the, down that bitterness, bring up the flavor even more, well, and then it when you're be up super there, Charlie, soft. you should tell them. I'm gonna walk them through it. Yep. See what they. Think. You, should, you should walk them through yeah. it, Charlie. Because <laughs> I mean, it's got a, it's got a little bit of hoppy bitterness to it, but it's not overpowering. It's, no, it's totally totally approachable. It'd be something you give somebody like oh. You know, I don't really like hoppy beers. I'm like, yeah. oh, let's start here. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah those citra here. hops are like my favorite. Oh, yeah. you know, it's like, like I would citra mosaic. If somebody comes beer. out with like a snack, how about pack you of citra hops? Making some citra, uh, you know, and bring it in here, and we'll run you through it. I'm gonna have to dust off the old equipment yeah. to do that. Yeah. Power about, wash. It's about three years of dust on that wow. stuff. I think you should. Yeah, maybe I should just you know I got you know we have friends that are brewers like maybe we should just. Uh, Say, hey, I got this recipe. Let's try it. You know, yeah. See what happens. Yeah. Give it a shot. Maybe yeah. that's, maybe that's, maybe that's a better a, call. I is. like the sound of that. Yeah. As long as I'm involved with the drinking part of it. So you can get good. the collaboration with Josh. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Is Josh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Josh. Like that's a name everybody knows, <laughs> yeah. right? Hey, we, it's hey, it's we're Modern we're Times, <laughs> Burning Beard, and Josh. <laughs> hey. Because <laughs> that last one slides right in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just falls right off your tongue. <laughs> it's just a work in progress, yeah. I think. Oh, I think you should. I think you should make some more beer. Yeah. I've, 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 uh, I've, uh, I've enjoyed a, it. It's been a long that. time. It's been a long time. Either that, I'm going to break that one out that's still sitting in the fridge in there. <laughs> <laughs> in a bottle. I bottled that. It's been on ice the entire time. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. Which which one is it? It's the Citra. It's the Citra? Huh? Yeah. Mm. That was a good beer. That was a good beer. I, you know, I will. I you know will. what? I think I'm gonna go get it. All right, little. You know, uh, we're we're gonna. I'm gonna pop this for you guys, and then I'm gonna go get. We're it. gonna let it warm up. Yeah, this one scout. is this one is ready. Feel mm. that. That's pretty. I I do love the bottle. Like I don't know yeah, what they have to do to get super cool. Well, this is gonna be cool. We get to do oh, it. Oh my god! Uh, we get boys. to make an untapped thing. Oh yeah, yeah, for Josh's <laughs> beer. <laughs> <laughs> or your, what's the name of the brewery? <laughs> most your coffee. Here we go. I name this thing. Mm. Tenzig Norge. Yeah. Oh should. my goodness. Sorry. So, I got the, a little uh, excited there. so those of you, sorry, no, I'll let you go. No. Speaking of the bottle, it's a matte black bottle. It's not. It's a. It, it's actually if somebody had ever gonna is ever gonna bottle, like truly bottle a high end. IPA. Uh, That's smoke. the bottle awesome. you should use because there's no light getting into that puppy. Right. Mm-hmm. It's the same. You know, the um, Humble C uses small bottles. Mm-hmm. Uh, the same thing. So does um, uh, uh, Moxa. Moxa does as well. There's going to be no light permeation in this. <laughs> it's like glue coming off the top. It is oh. not. It's just tasty glue. <laughs> so this back to our, our history lesson. Tenzig Norgay uh, was the uh, the first Sherpa to... Uh, um, to climb Mount oh, Everest. That right. is so cool. That's right. I um, read that. Yeah, and then his kid did it and on the 50th anniversary. His kid climbed it. Um, but like he, it. he had climbed uh, Mount Everest, yeah. I think, six times. So we're going to climb. So we're, drinking this is like climbing Mount Everest. You drink Absolutely. enough of this. And you'll, you'll, <laughs> you can uh, walk right up. Thank you. Yeah, right. exactly. So it's a barrel-aged oh, uh, maple coffee stout Snow coming awesome. in at uh, 12.9%. Mm-hmm. They say created to, uh, uh, to honor the incredible Sherpas of, uh, of Nepal. Uh, this stout was blended from a few select barrels, which aged between 16 and 19 months. They cold conditioned it on Bambino Estate Panamanian Geisha Coffee from our forever friends at Mostra. Barrel aged maple uh, syrup from their Amish pals at Miller Maple Farm. Awesome. And then uh, got the Amish in there. So they say this is uh, a stout to savor to celebrate uh, 
one of your life's great accomplishments. Wow. And Josh, you you making it back alive is what we're celebrating yeah. today. You know, three weeks on the road, you know. No uh no tragedies. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah, you, it's just super so mapley on the on the front end. You can smell it. It's that's a little boozy on the it does smell, smell a little, right? little but you don't t- taste it, but Think it, that, uh, the viscosity, I, I'm just rolling around in the glass trying to, like, you know, get a look at it. Oh, man. And it's just hanging onto the glass. Mm. Wow. So this is a once-in-a-lifetime beer, right? Yeah, they, um, I think you could get two of the, Forager, like, they have such a, such a crazy following. Um, they, uh, and I, I didn't really realize it the last time I was in Minnesota, like, I was like, oh. I'll just, you know, I'll drive down there for lunch and I'll be able to get, they make these, uh, push or method pops or, uh, method pops, I think is what they're called. They're like, they're slushies. Um, we brought some of those back and and the crowlers or whatever. Um, but it's crazy how their, uh, their following is their stuff sells out instantly. It's certainly one of the best breweries in Minnesota. Uh, it's like a, it's a scratch kitchen. Like you probably drove through like Rochester or you probably came up 35. But, uh, yes, I did. Okay. Actually. Yeah. So it's a, it's a little ways away from, uh, you, you were probably, uh, you know, an hour away from it, um, driving through there. Well, right. we, we went straight through the middle of east to west. Yeah. Of Minnesota. Okay. They need some road work up there. Just. Yeah. Well, it's road, it's, it's <laughs> road work season right now. You know, it's you got three months of, uh, it's three months of, uh, Normal. Of summer and then you got, uh, you know, nine months of winter. Hey, we got some excitement coming out. Oh, yeah. I need some glasses. Oh, man. Oh no, you didn't. Uh, this didn't have there's no citra. citra, so you. Oh my goodness, simple things. I think we should go for that. Yeah, that. Uh, I, it's not one of my favorites, but it's a Calypso Columbus hop. It was basically just a basic pale ale. I mean, I think it came in at like six percent. Mm. Um, the other one here, it'll be interesting how much flavor is uh, left of it. This is fun. So I made it. It's an oatmeal stout. I made with vanilla beans, soaked in vanilla beans, and I used uh, heavy weather coffee beans from modern times. In this? In this beer, yeah. Yeah. So it's technically a collaboration with modern times. They just don't know it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We can neither confirm nor deny. Oh, man. Simple, uh, yeah, simple thing. uh, And this this breakfast out came in at like 4.8, I believe, when I made it. Um, it was actually, that was one of my favorite beers I made. It was the first one I did like multiple. This was for the, editions. for the school. When yeah, you, when I, did the gala. I did it the gala. I did it for the gala. My boss said, Hey, can you, uh, bottle some beers for the gala? And I said, sure. You and really it want is. my beer. And they, uh, yeah. Simple things was, is one. Of, it was just my go-to pale ale to make just kind of Steve, you want to do this simple. after potty? Oh, you can do it. I mean, you yeah, don't care. You don't? You guys are in charge. Well, we're still talking yet. about this one, right? Oh, are we? Yeah. Good. Yep. Yeah. So, I I, it. the one thing I will say about this one, sweetness, yes. Oakiness, yes. The I Lots of alcohol to Do it. Do you taste a lot? I taste a lot of alcohol. What is it? Maybe 13? it's just me. 12.9. 12.9. But it doesn't... It's not terrible. It's not... It's no, 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 no. Like, no it certainly it doesn't, doesn't distract. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah. It's just like... Maybe it's because we drank some... Sours, lighter first. beers, yeah. But yeah, you definitely taste. You know, it it does have. It's not overpowering, but you do taste like a little bit of that alcohol. Maybe more than you do like some uh, um, some of the pastry stouts that, that we have. Um, sweet, little sweet, like yeah, like you said. But uh, I'm a huge fan. Like the, uh, I'd have to say maple, like maple uh, uh, beers with maple in it, maple syrup, normally aren't my favorite. But this is uh, this is really good. It smells like molasses, sweet molasses. I love it. So Charlie just popped a bottle of the simple things. I actually got some. Uh, wow, carbonation on it. Wow, there is carb. That's an old bottle, dude. It's it's working well. Yeah, yeah. I just tasted it. It's fine. I'd drink it. Well, there you go. Three then again, year, I'll drink it. Three year old bottles, refrigerated <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Ah, so much fun. Yeah, we're throwing it out there. Old Josh Payne whipping out his own beers. He loves it. He didn't even expect that. I know it. It's, I wish I had the citra. I thought I did, but I don't. It's, it's you know, it's my own beer, so I'm going to say it. I, it's better than I expected it to be. 
guess what I'm going to do? Mm. Cracking this one. Oh, now that smells like that's a the better. That's the better one. Look at that. Look at that head. Whoa! That had... Look at the head on that thing. Holy cow. Good. No. How did that happen? It's working. What's this, Simple Things? What, uh, what's that? This is a... Uh, simple Things was just a... It's a pale ale with uh -huh. Calypso and Columbus hop. It's... it's Honestly, it's probably what I just had laying Dude, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The breakfast, this one I called breakfast because it was oatmeal, vanilla, and coffee. Like, yeah. And yeah. these are old beers. And They're they still three taste years great. old. They taste great. That was yeah, the don't really come through this one. Look at that. Too much anymore. But it no, wasn't super. it's three years old. It wasn't designed to be super oh, hoppy. Right, it was, right. I think the I, IBU when I originally made it was like 40. Oh, yeah. It was It was supposed to be a it's light probably a drinker, light yeah. you know. <laughs> I mean... I don't I remember we had these one night. Like we, uh, did you bring them to like investment club or? Oh, Probably. I think, I, you know what? I think you brought them over to, uh, oh, uh, Stout's good. Turner's house. Could have been. I don't, I don't know. even know the really Turner good. guy you talked about. Stout is amateur. Wow. The, yeah. The, I don't know. The Stout, when I made the Stout, I didn't expect it to Chris, be that good. Doing? It is really good. And, wow. uh, Put it in there. I'm glad it's still good. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it was a fun one to make. Like finding out when to put in mm -hmm. the vanilla, how long to put the vanilla in the coffee in. Mm -hmm. and how much vanilla you put in there? Apparently not enough because yeah. I don't taste any yeah. vanilla. It, the the vanilla is going to be the thing that falls out. It's going to it's going to fall. Yeah. It's been sitting there for three years. So you did coffee. Coffee was heavy weather. Okay. From uh, modern times. I smell times. the coffee. I mean, that was that was my favorite coffee you know, at the time. I had yeah. it. I smell like, it. Oh, there's a light thing of vanilla there now. Yeah, there's a little vanilla in there. If you whip mm -hmm. it around a couple times and get it frothy, you can catch that vanilla. Hmm. That's pretty good. Pretty doggone good. I like it. Three years old. Yeah. I mean, I got these are the oldest beers I have in my fridge. So. Doubtful. Doubtful. <laughs> I would like fridge. to like actually do an audit on that. Yeah. There's we're no way. The after potty, and you know what we're going to do? We're going to do the. Um, that one from All Oregon. Remember you said? Oh yeah, the um, uh, Huckleberry Sour that they did with Northern. All Oregon stuff. It was Northwestern hops. something. No, it was it? It was they used the everything they. It was back when they were starting the the Portland. It was at the origins of the Portland location, and they uh, uh, they used every every ingredient came from Oregon. Yeah. Mm. As mulberries, I think, is the berry in it. Who makes it? Modern Times. They did yeah. it one okay. time. It's like Northwestern Exposure or something like that. Yeah. It's in a, um, it's in a it's 750 he, bottle. We were going through some... Last time I was over here, we were going through some old boxes. And I'm like, dude, Charlie, you got some... There's beer. some phenomenal some beers, beers in there. <laughs> They're just yeah. sitting here. So We'll get to them. Which yeah. Is, yeah. <clears throat> Sooner rather than later. I, I'm I glad you guys still like my beer. I didn't yeah. get any no, of no. that one. Yeah, no, it's great. Okay. You didn't. The, more? the Calypso hey, Columbus one is it's it is what it is. It wasn't designed to be anything banger. Mm -hmm. It was sure. kind of a drinker. No, it was tasted fine. Tasty, yeah. still working. It's not that bad. Stout is still working. <laughs> I told you. Uh, dang it! What do you think I was lying to you? Maybe I should have started just to a make brewery. you feel better. I'm going to say something like that. Come on, I got a buddy man. that's trying to start a brewery. Yeah, what buddy's that? He um. Oh, he was, uh, he was in local or, uh, uh no, he lives up, up north, but he was, uh, he was at a brewery this weekend or, uh, I mean, I think he was, he was over watching, uh, I mean, he was hanging out with this brewer and watching him drill holes in barrels and tasting straight out of barrels. And he was pretty excited by it. Yeah. He, well, he like mentioned, the, he's just, like, I got to get a brewery. Whatever it takes, response. whatever they did to sterilize the drill bit to get it into the barrel, he was overwhelmed with, so. He it goes, does. and then they just shove a nail in there. You yeah. Know? yeah. I'm like, great. I remember the first time I, I got the, I got a, a brewery who was doing a uh, tour um, at one time. And it was their barrel production, and it was all sours. And it was the first time I ever had something right out of a barrel. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's Because it, it's not fermented. It's not carbonate. I mean, it's fermented, but it's not carbonated. It's not really ready to go. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of a cool experience. Yeah. Like, when you... When you get to taste something before something's ready, but you can see where it's going. Yeah. You kind of get, you, you see the flavors that are happening and like, oh, add some carbonation to that or add a little more time to that. Things will balance out a little more, but you get like, 
that part of the the brewing process and the and the aging process yeah fascinates me like i wish i could go to every brewery and be like hey where's your barrel room man can yeah. you pull some of those nails for oh, me just, want a little nail just, taste. just give me a, a mouthful because it is a, it's a cool experience to they see have it up high enough i could probably let it just run into yeah, my mouth to see you know to, to taste the beer before it's really ready <laughs> right but to kind of like see the evolution i like i that's what i'd love to be able to do sometimes is to like a beer after three months, a beer after six months, oh, and you're sure. like waiting for it to get to where you want it to go. Yeah, um, and that's what a lot. Of, that's why I, I kind of like the sour environment because that's a lot of what they're doing. They're tasting them as they go. They don't always know when they're going to be ready. Mm, like right. some of them are ready right away. And yeah, it's like that right. ah, needs a little more time. Yeah, you know, and it's yeah, always to make that decision is weird. I mean, who's yeah. going to be that? Because everybody's got a different taste. Well, power, yeah, I mean, I think, you know? yeah, like, I think, I, I think they know what they're looking for. No, I way. understand that, but, but I mean, yeah. can you imagine being the guy going, "Yeah, it's ready." And yeah, it's well, not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's like the difference between you know, what makes you great and you know, or like okay. like an you know, okay brewer or a great brewer, right? Like Kyle, like you look at like Horace, right? Or like like Kyle, at, and he, like he had he had uh, like as a beer judge had tasted ten thousand beers, right? Like that he had. He had all these notes that he had talked about a, a while ago in an Instagram post. Like, I mean, that guy knows what good tastes like, right? Yeah. So he like like he'll send out an email like, "Hey, based on you know," he's like, oh, "I'm hoping to have this available in six months or eight months." You know, like he's like, "Up, oh, not ready." Or, or what? I mean, it's I, obviously no. And, and, and too, it's like even the bottle conditioning portion of it. Like they'll they'll take a barrel, like okay, it's ready to bottle, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's ready to drink. Oh out. right, yeah. right. Like they. They'll bottle them and let them um, sit seven. for another sit, three, six months. Right. And so they're popping a bottle every once in a while to see where it's at. Right. So you're like, okay, this is ready. Or yeah, it needs a little more time. You know, but like to their point, and I, you know, um, I mean, yeah, you don't want to put something out because like it's damaging to your brand yeah. or whatever, yeah. you know, like, um, like back to, to Hort, like when he had a couple of, couple of people had said that, that he had, um, that they tasted off flavors. So he had popped like, 30 of these bottles, right? And he was like, hey, it was like, I don't, it was a very small yeah. percentage. Like two of, of the 30. Yes, or one of, of, the 30. of like one of the 30 yeah. that, that he had tasted off flavors and he tossed the whole batch, rebrewed it and changed the label color. So had you picked up on the first pickup, um, these people that picked it up and a couple of people were like, hey, this tasted kind of off. He then, you know, put the kibosh on anybody else picking up, rebrewed it and gave yeah. everybody like, he was like, hey, you guys, if you picked them up, you can have them. You know, just please don't trade them. Don't don't rate them. You know, like and he had put like on, on the just drink them and enjoy He's like, you could drink them and enjoy them, uh, or, or you know, just out. dispose of them. But <laughs> but please don't rate it. You know, it's not what I intended it to be. Mm-hmm. Which was like just a that was an unbelievable move because yeah. he took it in the shorts on that, right? Oh yeah. Like, oh, but yeah. but in the, you know in the name of brand preservation, but I don't know. No, I understand. Well, I I think the one thing I wish I could do, and there's no way to do it, is like I've had be- uh, sours especially because I've I've. I've got multiple s- bottles of a specific sour, and you know your your mind can't remember the taste. But to have it right when you buy it, have it six months later, have right. it a year later, mm. that beer actually changes. Sure. Mm-hmm. And 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 how does it change? And and like even like this, uh, the one the Sun Rhythms. I've had, Sun Myths. I've had the original version of yeah. it. Mm-hmm. It's not that. Like yeah, I, I, I know, sure. I remember the original. That's not it. But they also have peach adjuncts to it. It's you know what bear- beer that has been true every time I've tasted it? It's always the same to me. Hmm. It's McKellar's Passion Pool. They've even changed the label, and that beer is probably one of the best things I've ever tasted. Is that, what, is that why you have it on tap most well, of the time? Yeah. Speaking of uh, what was the best beer uh, you've tasted, what was the best of these beers you, you tasted? So uh. to, to kind of recap, we had the uh, uh, the Sun Myth. Uh, we had the the uh, Horace. The um, we had the the what was the name of the? You beer? say I'm not you get your Provence Che. Provence. Yeah. Provence. The uh, the lady in shred and, and finally the Tenzig Nor uh, Norgay. What would you guys, uh, Charlie? What do you? What no, do you I'm think? not going first. Damn it! All right, Josh. Uh, since you're the guest, yeah, oh, I, get, I, I, I really love peach and a sour. 
Like, wait, wait, we drank two of Josh's beers too. Oh, we did, we did. Okay. That, yeah. that, that for me, I I can't well, rightfully give mine. You can't, right. you I can't, can't choose. Yeah, right, right, right. You're too humble. My beer is too humble. To my beer is the choose. best. <laughs> <laughs> totally not the best today. Um, <laughs> wait, huh. on the age wise, it's the oldest. Of <laughs> it's you do win the there. Six beers we had. It's it's the only aged stout yeah. we had today. Truly, it uh, is bottle condition stout. When was the last time you had one of those? Uh, I do like the I did like the Sun Myth. I think uh, it was definitely a more sour, acidic, and to to up against the lemon one, it, it was more. Uh-huh. It had more flavor. It had more yep. depth to it. And I do stone fruit in a sour. It's like if I see peaches, nectarines, or cherries on a sour, <laughs> I'm in. I I'm probably buying it just out of principle. Like I'm just gonna. Go ahead and do that. Yes. So, Sun Myth was... Sun Myth for you. Steve-o. Oh, I'll go with the West Coast Pale Ale. You're on the, you're on the yeah. West Coast? Yeah. I'm Charlie on, I'm on, back, I'm on my desert island. <laughs> okay. Crease? Like, oh, yeah. If, yeah. yeah it will be. if you're on a desert <laughs> island, which one are you going to... And yeah. Um, <laughs> man, what, a, uh, what route am I going? I would probably go... Um, they were great, you know. I'm a, I'm a huge West Coast guy. Um, we you know, we uh, we talk about that, but today we're going this route. Revenge, revenge. No. We're going. We're going that Horace. Revenge. Yeah, I'm no, I, I really like that. Today. I liked how how light it was. I like you know it was just that little bit of lemon on there. It was uh, I like the tea, the you know the dryness. On it, was well it, was it was well balanced. Mean, that's what I was saying. It was well balanced. I'm going to so. shock everybody. Today. Uh-huh. Charlie, turn the turn the leaf, go on the west coast. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the lady in shred. I mean, it was just. I mean, all these other ones are great, but mm-hmm. that one is so different from the rest of these that it just bowled me over when I tasted it. Well, there it is. We got uh, two votes for the uh, the humble sea uh, west coast pale. A couple for some sour. But I'm drinking and, the re- uh, I'm drinking the rest of the stout. So, <laughs> <laughs> and until next time, guys. Cheers. 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 Well, I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to subscribe to the show via your favorite podcast player app, then head over to thepodcraft.com and look for the subscribe links. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures of all the beers and other good information at thepodcraft.com. The site also has links to send us email feedback and to connect with us on social media. In closing, please continue to recommend the Podcraft Beer Show to your craft beer friends and family members in your life. The more the merrier. Thank you so much for sharing your time and attention with us. For Chris and Charlie, this is Tech Guy Steve signing off for this week's The Podcraft Beer Show. Have a great rest of your day. The Podcraft Show is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020 through 2021. The show is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, then please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for informational, educational, and discussion purposes only. In compliance with fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.